Hey there, you're watching the Jessa channel on YouTube. I'm Jessa and today I am here with more Kathy Rain. Kathy Rain is a fantastic game and if you have not yet gotten your copy, run over to Steam where you can grab it and uh, it's a fantastic game. So let's dive back in where we were in Kathy's dorm room. We're gonna do a little bit of computer hacking this morning. There's a note for us. Hi, Cat. Feel free to use my computer while I'm away. My password is angel love, without the quotes. If you call my friend Dave at 555-2492, he can set you up with some software. I'll be back in a few hours, super psyched about the investigation, E. P.S. No gum on the keyboard, please. Remember the last time? Oh, please, like she actually uses the space bar? <laughs> Shit, looks like she forgot to write down the username. Oh well, shouldn't be too hard to guess. I think it's just some combination of her first and last name. I'm gonna add Hacker Dave to our contact list. So we can call him up and flirt like crazy. So, uh... We have her password. We'll need her username. Let's call it Packer Dave. Yeah. Hey, I'm Kathy. Eileen said to call you about some software. Ellie who? Eileen. Red hair, glasses, speaks so fast her gums ache. Oh, right. I thought her name was Errol. Figured it was kind of a weird name for a girl. You must what? have a hearing disorder. Yeah. You must have a thinking disorder. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, uh, the software? Burn. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, can't. Not really. Ugh, I knew she was full of shit. Nah, I mean, sure, I used to be able to get pirated software. But not anymore. There was this misunderstanding and my network privileges were revoked. Me and Clyde, the campus IT guy, don't really see eye to eye. We used to play bocce together and let's just say he is one sore loser. Can't you just patch things up with the guy? No way, he's such an ass. He even thinks TNG is better than the original series. It is! He thinks the what is better than the what? <laughs> right? That guy. <laughs> I'm on Clyde's side on this one. <laughs> Can't you just hack your way back in somehow? Isn't that what you do? He blocked the Ethernet port in my room. I don't even have physical access. Wow, Can't you that's cruel. Leave your room? Use a computer in the library or something. Aren't they connected to the network? No, there are cameras in there. Clyde is just waiting for me to make a move so he can get me expelled. You call yourself a hacker? Just use your brain for Christ's sake. Let's figure this out. Wow, you're so sassy, Nancy Drew. Well, okay, only an admin account can change the access port. The only way to even theoretically crack one would be if Clyde logged on to a machine to which we have unrestricted physical access. And, ooh, I got an idea. I'm not gonna like this. Well, what you could do is intentionally crash your PC. That sounds yeah. especially stupid. It sounds like a great crash idea. Crash it, crash it. Just crash it a little, then call Clyde. Clyde will come over to fix it. If you're lucky, then he'll log on to the network using his admin account. Afterwards, you can use some of my tools to find and crack the password locally. Worth a shot, I guess. Okay, you can come over and set it up. No way. I have severe IBS. It just wouldn't work. IBS? <laughs> what the hell is that? You don't want to know. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> drop off everything you need. It's not rocket science. You do what I ask, and I'll give you some juicy software. Quid pro quo. Whatever, weirdo. We'll see. Hey, can you say creepazoid? Because, yeah. <laughs> You're wondering. That's a, that's a word that we used to say way back in the ancient 1995 days. <laughs> okay, so we need to uh, crash a computer. Clyde's delivery service, or not Clyde's, but Dave, Hacker Dave's delivery service, gives us this envelope. 
Let's open this bad boy up. There was a floppy disk in there with a note taped to the back. Floppy disk. <laughs> One, boot your computer using the blue floppy. Two, use the corrupt MBR utility to crash the file system of the computer. Take the floppy out and reboot. Three, call Clyde at 555-8181, tell him your computer crashed, and give him the error code on the screen. He'll come over and have a look. It shouldn't take too long for him to fix. Four, now comes the crucial part. You need to somehow make him log on with his admin account. Five, reboot and retrieve the admin credentials using the blue floppy. Six, reboot and log on using Clyde's admin account. Seven, look for some kind of tool to remotely open my ethernet port. Dorm B, room eight. That's it. And remember, if you mess up somewhere, just call Clyde and he'll have to take care of it. It's his job after all. So I'm going to guess that Clyde really, really, really hates his life. <laughs> really hates his life. Okay, let's put floppy disk on computer. Having to go into dorm rooms all over and fix people's whatever they've managed to break using gum or coffee or whatever. Checking removable devices. Floppy found. Starting Phoenix OS. I wonder if uh, the developer used any actual, if he just made these names up. Corrupt hard drive, MBR. I'm not sure what MBR stands for. I'm going to guess it stands for Master Boot Record. Let me know if I'm right. MBR corrupted. Although I've never seen it ever say corrupt hard drive. <laughs> that's never, that's, anyway. Okay, exit and shutdown. All right, time for some expert help. Oh, Clyde! IT, this is Clyde speaking. How can I help you? You can help me come over here and beat this computer into shape. Hi, I need you to come and fix my roommate's computer. What seems to be the problem? It won't start up. There's some kind of system failure with an error code on the screen. Probably a hard drive failure. Which room are you in? Dorm A, room 5. I'll be there in a few minutes. Thanks. So it amuses me how gracefully and easily Kathy can lie about pretty much everything, which means that she's going to make an excellent detective. I bet Clyde's totally handsome. Hey, Clyde from IT. Hi, Whoa. Come in. <laughs> okay. Wrong there. Hey, Clyde, buddy. My, oh my. Now, how did this happen? Couldn't tell you. No idea. It was like this when I started it up this morning. <laughs> hmm. Let's have a look. And presto, good as new. Oh, Clyde. Perfect. Could could you try my hero real quick just to make sure it works? You go ahead. I'll wait. Okay, so we need to force him to log on. And so the way that we do that is to not really have any idea how to log into this bad boy. <laughs> um, so we're going to type in her username, which is a combination. And if you are playing the game and you're unsure of how to find her username, you can call Clyde for it. If you can't log in at this point, he will leave and you can call him and he'll give you a clue to how to find her username. I'm skipping that to move us forward a little bit quicker. The password was Angel Love, but let's type in a password that is not her password. Because after three or four failed login attempts, we will be unable to get in and we'll need to ask for help from good old Clyde over there. And then maybe if we're really, really, really lucky, he'll ask us to go out to Taco Bell. Did Taco Bell even exist in 1995? I have no idea. Let's type in Taco Bell. <laughs> See? <laughs> nope. Taco Bell did not exist before. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's type in, um, let's see, the name of her dog, but Rumples. Yeah, no. How about, um, 
Oh, Eileen's a Christian, so um, how about praise the Lord? Oh, it doesn't let me do all that. Uh, how about... Um, oh, I know. Life of Brian. <laughs> nope. A uh, little Monty, Monty Python re reference. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, how about Grand Grandma Rain? Whoa! Oh, Oops. Now look what I did. Oh, whoopsie doodle. Loud. Let me try to log in with my account. Thanks, Clyde. Okay, everything seems to be in order. I've unlocked your account. Please, try not to break anything else. But oh, you'd have nothing else better to do, Clyde. Phase one complete. <laughs> are we good or are we good? Yeah. So. Hmm. The next thing that we need to do. One, boot your computer. Two, use the three. Done. Call Clyde at four. Yep. Now comes the crucial part. Five. Got it. Reboot and retrieve the admin credentials using the blue floppy. Six. Got it. Reboot. Seven. That's it. All right. Blue floppy to the rescue again. Blue floppy would be a great name for a superhero. Primary slave, secondary slave. This sounds promising. Extract admin password. Dun, da, da, da. User admin password gadget. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Now we can log on. Admin. Help if I could spell. Oh, cool. The tab key works to take you to the next, uh, just like in a computer. Wonderful. That was really smart. Well done. G A D G E T. Gadget. Welcome, Clyde. Why, thank you. All right. Let's see what kind of naughty pictures he has in the scanner. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, network settings. It was, oh, crapper doodle. It was dorm. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I think it was dorm B. I'm going to guess. Dorm B, port 8? Yes. Because this it's been turned off. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. Let's turn it back on. That should do it. I love the power we, hit, we, <laughs> we wield in our very... It's wonderful. What will happen? I'm just so tempted. Empty scanner. Oh. I was hoping we could scan something. Empty file. Oh well. So now we should be able to call Dave because we've turned on his Ethernet port for him again. So now he can pirate left and right. I love how the phone rings twice. Yeah. It's always great. <laughs> Guess what? You got it? Hang on. Oh man, I could kiss you! Uh, figuratively, that is. I am so gonna get back at Clyde now. What are those admin credentials, by the way? Not telling, buddy. Saving those for a rainy day. Huh. I suppose this nice floppy I prepared for you stays in my room then. Sure, then I'll just have to log back on and click that pretty little lock icon again. Now this is just emotional blackmail. Quid pro quo, Dave. <laughs> you're like a she Clyde. A Clyde Huh. That is the worst insult I've ever heard. Later, <laughs> She's phased by nothing. <laughs> Alright, hacking complete. <laughs> An envelope arrives with I'll exactly these notes now. I don't need them anymore. But we now have a new envelope. There was a floppy disk inside. Another floppy disk. Let's see what... I love how when Kathy walks, her hair moves. It's cute. 
Okay. Don't want to think about, don't want to remove, want to use it. Okay, we're gonna log in. We could log in as ourselves, but I'm guessing we need to log in as E. Summers and hers is Angel Love. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, I'm not locking myself out again. I'm gonna try this one more time, and if not, we'll have to actually go and look and see what her last name is. A N G E L. L O V E. Phew. <sighs> that was scary. Software installed. Voice Forge and M Image Analyzer. Let's use the Image Analyzer. Drag and drop image files to analyze. Drag and drop audio files to analyze. I think what we need to do is to take this uh, out and remove the floppy that gave us the wonder. And now we can read this floppy disk. Wait, no, no, no. Oh, I just made a mistake. Oh, I'm so sorry. This is only the floppy disk to allow us to uh, We're going to exit and shut down. My apologies for that. Okay, I think we switched enough floppies for now. <laughs> okay, so we have photo of soldiers, overexposed picture, micro cassette, dictaphone. So let's see what the next step is. The key is in here, the scanner. This is the uh, investigation and the overexposed picture. Let's take this first. Let's put it on the scanner. And... Don't make me log in again. Oh, crapper. Good. I thought for sure this is going to make me type it in again. Image analyzer. Drag and drop image files to, an to analyze. Floppy drive is empty. Scanner. Here we go. Ah. Brightpicture.bmp. <laughs> Analyze image. Overexposure, please. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, this is cool. Should we just bring everything down or? No, look at that. This must be a photograph taken of the night that Grandpa rain. <gasps> look at that photograph. Wow, that's cool. Look at it. Come into focus. Oh, that's cool. <gasps> is that? Whoa. I'll print the whole picture for now, but there's probably more to find. What is that lighting about? <laughs> I love it. He found the developer one. found. That's awesome. The developer found uh, a uh, sound of a dot matrix printer. That's great. OK, so let's uh, log out and then we'll analyze the tape. I don't know if we could have put both on at the same time. I don't know, but. So I uh, understand that you can put this tape right onto the scanner I don't see as well any too. Need to scan this tape. The other one might be more useful. Oh, okay. So the other one that she's talking about is um, Don't call, don't write. You Erica just had her first born. It's a boy. Leave a message after the beep. You've reached the rain. I love the rewind feature. That is so cool. Okay, so uh, so I need to remove this tape. Remove tape. 
The answering machine microcassette tape, let's analyze that somehow on a scanner. I have no idea how this would actually work, but heck, I'm going with it. Computer? Kathy has had a very busy morning. Scanner? Tape? Wonderful. Tape answering machine dot wave. Voice forge. Okay, Erica Wade, let's see if we can't motivate you to hear me out. Found five distinct voices separated into sections. Wow, this is really cool and way, way more advanced than anything I ever saw on a computer in 1995. Okay. You've reached the rain residence. All right, and then the... Next one. I remember you trying to use um, voice recognition software back around this time frame. And <laughs> it could not. I might as well have been speaking German, to be honest. Hello, Joseph, Mrs. Rain. It's me, Charles. I thought I'd give you a call. Erica just had her first born. It's a boy. Thankfully, he looks nothing like his father. Uh, listen, I was thinking maybe you'd like to come and visit. Okay. Internal error? Whoa, 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 what's up with this? <gasps> whoa! What the hell? Calm down. Whoa! Happy. Think, just think. It has to be some sick joke left in the program by Dave. Whoa! That must be it. He is one twisted fuck. What the? Oh, that. Whoa. That seriously creeped me out. I'm not even Kathy Rain and that creeped me out. <laughs> what the heck? Oh my god. So the static on that tape, that's what... You people are making me sick. We're not... Yeah, we don't really need to hear that again. I think that's Kathy Rain's mom. As back bastards can cocky going got happened, I'm it's Joseph. <laughs> Joseph, you there? It's me, cocky. I... It happened to me too. It happened to him, too. Okay, so, yeah. Let's go back. Oh, my gosh. That is just so... To manipulate this particular voice recording. All right, so I guess we don't need to, to do anything with this yet. Let's just quit for now. Wow, that, that was really creepy and really cool and really creepy. So the problem that we have in front of us is that Erica Wade, who is uh, the daughter of a friend of a friend of Kathy's grandfather, the man who had this difficulty, had this accident, mysterious accident. She won't talk to us and she's the one we need to talk to him and have clues. So we need to trick her into believing that someone, her father, would like her to talk to us. So let me show you what I mean by that. It's a little bit complicated, but we're gonna go over here to this tape machine and we're gonna use it to make a customized voice message. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to, um, let's see, available words, you play. The rain residence. Leave a message after the beep. Okay, so export to tape. Ah, okay. So here are letters in here. Erica. Ah, uh, I see, by clicking a letter. Hello, Joseph, Mrs. Rain. It's me, 
Charles, Erica's Charles' daughter. So somehow we need to have something that we can play over the phone that she would believe is a message of some sort. Let's see. Uh, father. Anyways, baby best boy, Charles. All right. So let's try this message. This is some pretty cool audio manipulation. Call. Let's see if this works. Call Kathy Rain. Almost. Just a few more tweaks. That should work. Ah, hello, Erica. It's your father. Call Kathy Rain and give her what she wants. Bye. Normalizing voice patterns. Voice patterns normalized. Exporting to tape. Okay, this is cool. <laughs> okay, seriously, there there is no right, way. Ford's message should now be at the end of the original tape. Wonderful. So... I, I just, I, there's no way that in 1995 any software existed. Well, maybe it, to, it, to governments perhaps, but certainly didn't come with the Microsoft suite. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> so, I, we saved that to, will she just take the tape out or do I have to do something now? It's at the end of the tape, she said, so let's. It's some advanced scanner thingy. It can scan pictures, tapes, all sorts of stuff. Okay, there's a clue as to what it is. Um, micro cassette answering machine and overexposed pictures. So we have those now. Let's put this uh, in the dictaphone. And see how it worked. Not right now. I have the forged message ready for playback. Oh, I was really hoping to hear it. Okay. Well, that was a very interesting episode. A lot of hacking. That was that was pretty cool. That that whole tape, that was a pretty neat puzzle. Well done. So I'm going to save this game here. And in the next episode, we're going to find out what all that hacking work had to do with the mysterious disappearance and uh, uh, the mysterious happens, the mystery, basically, mysterious mystery uh, between Kathy Rain. I want to ask um, if you like this, please hit the thumbs up button below. And if you loved it, join the party and subscribe. I'll see you back here in 1995 for more Kathy Rain in the next episode. This mystery is really interesting. And if you have not gotten your copy of Kathy, Kathy Rain, it's available on GOG and Steam right now. So go around and get yourself a copy and play it along with me. And as always, thank you so much. I'm going to turn Kathy around so we can actually look at her. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> thank you so much for watching.